Alrighty, in this tutorial, we're going to create a vector-based stitch effect. And really the purpose of this effect is to mimic the applique type effect that we see in the retail market now. So applique, of course, is cut and sewn fabric. So oftentimes we see this in the athletic market as well. So baseball sort of split front jerseys. Now this is a really cool screen printing technique. We can replicate that applique look, but we can do it by using uh, the screen printing method. Now we can also use specialty printing technique. Uh, we can use puff or additives to really give the stitch component of the design a little texture and dimension. So a quick way to add a lot of value to an imprint and do something unique. Now this is also sort of a template. This is something that you can create one time in different styles and just call up and edit. So for example, we're going to create what you see on screen now, this West Haven uh, example that you see on screen now. But what I mean by using this as a template Notice this, this is two layers of text. So we have layer one and layer two. And layer one, of course, is a white uh, outline. Well, notice this, I can go ahead and select one layer and I can go ahead and backspace. And you can see I can treat this just like text. So I'm gonna type out state champs and you can see that input on the screen now. Now I can go to the secondary layer and I can make that same modification. So I'll go back and double click this uh, secondary layer and I'll make the same modification here, state champs. And what I'm gonna do now is align the two of those together and you'll see that it creates that dynamic effect. So a really quick way to, again, create a cool effect. You're not investing a ton of time doing it. It's, a, again, a pretty straightforward um, and easy effect to create, yet it adds, again, a lot of value unto a design. So your clients will appreciate it. Uh, it's simple to create. And again, this is a one-time investment because I'm gonna use it as a template. I would save this and I could call this back up and just as you've seen, customize a stitch effect. All right, let's create this from scratch so you can see the workflow here. First thing I'll do is I'll click the text tool and we're gonna go ahead and type out text. So in this case, again, because we're creating a template, I'm not too concerned with the way this is gonna look. So we'll type out state champs. Again, uh, you can see that on the workspace here. And of course, I'm gonna size this, position it, and make this large enough to work with. Okay, the next step in this process is to input a stroke. So what I'm gonna do now from the right hand side, you'll see the stroke menu. Here I'm gonna input a 10 point outline or stroke in Adobe Illustrator. And again, this is gonna serve as sort of the background uh, element to this design. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm really gonna create a duplicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste. So I have an exact replica or duplicate of the first element that I created. So what we wanna do with this, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make the fill transparent. So you can notice here on the left hand side where my toolbar is, I'm going to take the fill and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this or go ahead and select the none option. So I'm going to make that fill have no, uh, make it transparent effectively. So there's nothing in it. It's transparent now. And that'll be obvious if I hang this design over the topmost layer. You can see that interacts. Well, next thing we want to do is we want to change the stroke on this. And I might make this say uh, a two point stroke. And you can see how that makes that change now on screen. Okay, another step is we want to make that outline color, we want to represent whatever stitch color we're trying to mimic. So if I'm going to do a black and white, I'm going to want to convert that outline into a white color. So I'll go and select here using the color selector. I'll go and select white for this particular example. And of course, now you can't see it on screen. Fortunately, I'm going to go and select these two objects and we're going to use the align function. And I'll use the align to go ahead and center uh, and align these two objects. Now you can see what we have on the workspace may serve uh, the purpose of using this as its own unique effect, kind of creating an inline and outline type of effect to text. Well, we're not done here. We want to create, again, that satin stitch effect or a running stitch effect to create that applique type of look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the outline, the topmost layer. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the stroke menu, the stroke options. Now I want to make one thing clear. Oftentimes when you go to the menus in Illustrator, some of the core options or the advanced options are hidden. So here if I click on stroke, you'll see I just have the ability to do a point size. But if I click this little menu option to the right, that lets me show options and here I get an expanded menu. There's a number of things I can do here. I can butt the ends or round off the edges of the outline. So if I want to give sort of a unique texture or element to the outlines, I can also control the miter, the miter limit. So that's going to let me round off or bevel some of these edges on outlines. So these aren't necessary controls, but they're available if you're ever curious how to sort of constrain and control the edges and corners of your outlines. Those are the tools that will allow you to do it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the function down here that says dashed line. So here I have the ability to input a dashed line. You can see what we have on the workspace now is a three point dash. 
Well, I can change this to a two point dash and you're gonna see the effect now on screen in real time live. So again, this is a great way to create that sort of stitch effect. You can see the way it inputs now. You can experiment, you can control the size of the dash. You can also control the size of the outline stroke. So you can see how I just reduced that to a one point outline or weight and you can see how that dramatically changed the look of this particular effect. I can continue to modify and manipulate the dash. So here I have a smaller dash or I can increase the space between those two effects and maybe I'll boost this up to say four. And again, you can continue to play with this until you're satisfied with uh, the way it looks. So here this looks like a bean stitch, so kind of a unique effect. So again, I'm gonna save this and this is gonna be an interactive template so I can continue to revisit this and control it and just name drop it effectively. So if we're doing another project and I wanna give a client an example, all I have to do is again open up this file and I'm just gonna go ahead and modify the two layers. So I'm gonna go to the topmost layer and you can see I can just go and respace and start typing out the new text. So if I wanna make this say Arizona, or champs, whatever it may be, I can just dynamically change the text and that's gonna be reflected now in that second layer. So let's go and change that background layer and we'll type out champs. And you can see it's already positioned and uh, arranged and aligned for you automatically. So there's no extra work to be done. So again, really cool effect. Uh, in terms of output, you definitely wanna look at silkscreeningsupplies.com and look at some of the additives and some of the different uh, you know, specialty type inks to create gel effects or puff effects because it's really gonna take what would normally be sort of a flat effect and by giving a little texture and dimension to that satin stitch type of effect, you're really gonna make this design pop and your clients will really appreciate the, uh, the style.